Now to calculate the expected cell counts for these types of chi-square tests, we use this formula. Row total times column total divided by table total. So for this cell, 33, our row total is 91, since there was 91 11th graders. And there was a total of 154 people who said no. Now if we divide this by the total, 385, we'll get our expected cell count. So our expected cell count is 36.4. So for part B, we're going to perform a chi-square test for association. And this type of test works when you have two variables that are both qualitative or categorical variables. So grade is a categorical variable. We've got four different values it could be. And their response to this question is another categorical variable. They can either say yes or no. Let's use the four-step process. So for state, we said we wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. If you're not given a significance value, default to 0.05 for your alpha value. So our null hypothesis is there's no association between grade and whether or not a student feels cameras make the school safer. The alternative hypothesis is the more interesting one. It's there is an association between grade and whether or not a student feels video cameras make school safer. So in the state step, we have the hypotheses and our significance level, alpha. Before we move on to the plan step, let's talk a little bit about the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there's no association between grade and how they responded. So we expect no patterns in here if the null hypothesis is true. Now that doesn't mean we expect an equal number of yeses and nos for each grade. It just means we expect no predictability of knowing the student's response if you knew their grade. So the way the test works is it uses this sample data to determine how likely is it for us to observe data with this much predictability or patterns in it, if the null hypothesis is true. That's what our p-value is going to tell us. But let's move on to the plan step. In the plan step, we need our inference method and to check conditions. So if conditions are met, we will use a chi-square test for association. That's our inference method. Now for the random condition, in the stem of the problem, they say this was a random sample. So that condition is met. For the independent condition, since we're sampling without replacement, we have to assume the school has at least 3,850 students. So the 10% condition is met. Now that's a lot of students, but it does say it's a large school. So this condition is likely met or it's very close to being met. The large sample size condition is the hardest to check. We need to make sure that all of our expected cell counts are at least five. Now we already calculated the expected cell count for one of them in part A, but there's really a total of eight cells, this whole interior, the, the four grades times the two responses that we'd have to use this formula on. So I'm going to show you a trick to doing it on the calculator. If you press second and this X to the negative one power button, you'll get to the matrix menu. Now we want to go over to edit and we're gonna press enter on matrix A. So we get to define the matrix. The interior of our table here when we exclude the totals is four rows times two columns. So we want a four by two matrix. Now we're just gonna input the data. Now press second, quit. Now push the stat button and go over to test. We're gonna scroll down to option C, which is chi-square test. Now it asks for what matrix is your observed data in, and matrix A is already there, so we're good. Now for expected, it's asking us what matrix would we like to store our expected cell counts in. So we'll just leave it as matrix B. Now I'm going to push calculate, and go ahead and ignore that for now. We're going to press second quit, and go back to our matrix menu. Now, notice in names, we now have a 4x2 next to matrix A and matrix B. That means there's data in both of those. So if I go over to edit and I scroll down to B, these are all of our expected cell counts. And a quick scan looks like they're all greater than 5. So we have a large enough sample. Now for the do step, we have to calculate our chi-square test statistic, which is the sum of all the observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Now we don't have to do this by hand. If we press second quit to get out of our matrices and go back to stat, and we're just gonna run that chi-square test again. 
and I'm going to push draw this time. It's drawing the density curve for the chi-square distribution with three degrees freedom. Degrees freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. So in this case, three times one. And at the bottom of the output there, we see our chi-square test statistic. It's about 9.8. And we also see a p-value of about 0 0.0203. I'm going to copy down the curve they drew. And what this is showing us is that if there really is no association between grade and the response to this question, the probability of us having a sample with this much association in it is very close to 2%. That's a low number. So it's unlikely we would have sample data with this much association if in fact there is no association. You can also press calculate instead of draw, and that will just give you your chi-square test statistic, your p-value, and degrees freedom. Now we're ready for our conclude step. So if the null hypothesis is true, the probability of us seeing this much association in our sample is pretty low, about 2%. So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. For our conclusion, we're gonna say, with a p-value of about 0 0.0203, which is less than alpha at 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there's an association between grade and whether or not a student feels security cameras make the school safer. One last thing, let's say for some reason you were calculating this by hand and you had your chi-square test statistic and needed to find the p-value. You can do that by pressing second, vars to get to the distribution menu. Down here is chi-square CDF. For our lower limit, we'll put our test statistic. Our upper limit, just a really large number. And for degrees freedom, we'll put three. Now when I press paste and then enter again, we get our p-value. If you like this video and want to learn more about chi-square test, check out this playlist. It covers all the typical chi-square test and helps you distinguish which one you should use.